All right guys, we are starting off this morning in the bedroom here, specifically down here on the floor because ugh, over the past couple days we've had a unfortunate series of events. First off, we found a mouse in our trailer. Not only that, we found a dead mouse in the toilet bowl of the girl's bathroom. Not only that, Goose found the mouse in the toilet bowl in their bedroom after she had just peed on it. So I, we cannot express how disgusted we are with what happened. So needless to say, I immediately went to the store and spent probably far too much on rodent repellents, rodent killers, the electronic dispersers to try and eliminate that. But that was just step one of our unfortunate series of events. Step two was after we had gotten that cleaned up and thought, oh, we can now relax, poured ourselves a glass of wine, sat down on the bed to watch some Netflix and chill, and then I accidentally spilt Ashley's full glass of wine all over the side of the bed down onto the carpet, which was like in hindsight a blessing in disguise because we then pulled out Persephone's kennel which normally sits right here on the floor which is now over here normally this is there and when we pulled that kennel out we found that the carpet underneath there was drenched I'm not talking about moist I'm talking about soaking wet <sighs> Hence, number three in our series of unfortunate events. We have some sort of leak here. This was about two days ago, so what we did first was is I dried out the carpet with rags, put our dehumidifier on it and blow it on there for about 24 hours, which we thought had solved the problem because we weren't sure if it was a leak or if we had like spilt a bottle of water and didn't notice or if Persephone got a, bottle, a water bottle and chewed it and spilt water everywhere because she loves water bottles. Um, anyways. We thought we had got it all fixed because it was dry, but then we had a really heavy rain last night and this morning, it's damp again. And so I went up on the roof and looked around up there. I couldn't see any, any issues of any sort, like as far as like uh, seals being in the wrong position or cracked or broken. Um, but I did go underneath in the underpass and I did see a little bit of water puddling, actually a fair amount of water puddling on top of the steel enclosure, the tin enclosure for the propane tanks. So the water is somehow getting all the way down into the underpass, which is directly below, below here. The weird part is, is it is not wet. It is not very wet over here by the wall in this little upper piece right here where uh, the slide is sitting on top of isn't really wet at all. It's about six inches out where we have the majority of the moisture problem. So I'm scratching my head. I don't know how this is happening. All of the plumbing is running on the other side of the room. So it's not like we have a, a plumbing pipe there. We haven't done any changes over here or anywhere around here in forever. So uh, unfortunately, I think I'm gonna have to cut up the carpet today. So I'm gonna get my razor blade strip this off one because we've got to figure out where the water is coming from and two i want to see how much damage is done to the subfloor because i don't know how long this has been here whether it's been a couple days or it's been a couple weeks or a month uh, i don't think it's been more than a week because i don't smell any mold just just some minor you know mildewy smells so probably about a week would be my guess where we've had some severe water issues but i won't really know until we cut this open and check it out Hey guys, my name's James. And I'm Ashley. Three years ago, we sold our house and we've been traveling across the country ever since. Hi, I'm Goose. I'm Ashley. Join, Join us! us. Have yourself a man. Hold your breath.
so we got our two surface runs cut right here. Uh, but what I'm doing is I'm only cutting an inch deep for this first pass because if I cut two inches deep, which is my goal, uh, it just, it would be a beast to do. So we're just doing it in small runs. So now that we've got them both cut about an inch deep during the whole way, we'll go back through now and cut to the full two inches. But first we're gonna take a pause because there's so much dust in the air, even though we're wearing our little masks, we got the shop vac, we got water to keep the dust down, and we got the fan sucking the dust out. Ashley's asthma is getting to her a little bit, and it's e even getting to me. So we're gonna take a quick pause, recuperate, because breathing cement is not fun. Uh, and just FYI, the blade I bought is just a seven inch diamond blade designed for cutting concrete, and it is a wet or a dry blade. So the only reason we're pouring water down is to try and control the dust. It's not like we're trying to cool off the blade or anything like that. It is designed for being dry or wet. So that's all the water is for, is to try and control dust uh, and help our lungs not be unhappy with us. <laughs> feel so much different about this process if this was like a reno video and I was like remodeling in here but it's way worse when it's like a oh crap we have water damage <laughs> oh yeah look at all that moisture oh that's interesting the laminate runs all the way back which is actually probably a good thing because that's probably helped protect the moisture from getting into the subfloor so I won't have to replace the subfloor hopefully pretty much drenched right there. Since this all feels pretty hard and good right here, there's a little bit of moisture here. So what I'm wondering is if the water is running behind the carpet, not penetrating the carpet very much, and then just pooling and puddling over here. So I'm gonna cut this part out and just see what this looks like underneath here. Oh yeah, look at that. That's all wet right there. Okay. All right, I got some, some good news and some bad news. So I've got the majority of the carpet off here and you can see the discoloration in the wood, the dry wood, how it should look up over here and then the wet wood over here. The good news is, is this whole thing is not just wet, which means the leaks probably isolated over here and then it's seeping over. So theoretically we could be able to just cut this out here and replace this little section in the end once we figure out and fix the leak. So that's good. Also good that the floor, the subfloor, uh, seems to be fine. We caught it soon enough before any damage happened there. Um, also good news is like it's not just an ugly piece of particle board uh, of OSB like it is here. So we could even just do some sort of like cross seam like you know divider right here to cover that up and that would be a super simple fix the bad news is we definitely got a major leak because this is all quite damp and i don't know exactly where it's coming from obviously it's coming from the slide here somewhere but where exactly it's coming from and how long it's been doing that i i do not know yet so i'm still trying to do some research and figure things out <sighs> which is frustrating because i want to be out in the house working on getting the house done <sighs> projects are never ending. Anyways, I'll update you as soon as I figure out what's going on. I really hope it's just some, a simple thing as like maybe the flap wasn't opened all the way or something with the slide. I don't know. Time to do some research. Time to be a hero. If you have kids, name that show. Yes, I was right. Thank you. you can see the inside actually looks pretty good, which means it hasn't been that long that this leak's been going on. Otherwise, the inside of this board would be pretty messed up. Um, 
So I'm just gonna remove this top piece here as well, basically just taking off this whole little box assembly here because all it is is cosmetic at this point, well, ever. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of run it up to right here so that way we can identify exactly where this leak is coming from. Thankfully I've got all my power tools from building the house because if we were on the road, I would have been doing this by hand. All right, so now that we got that whole uh, section removed, I'm just gonna put a towel underneath there and then just let it be while it starts raining so we can see and identify where the drips are coming from. And who knows, maybe because I brought the slide in six inches and put it back out, maybe that adjusted the seams, the seals, those rubber gaskets. Maybe that's all it was. Uh, so we could be good to go, I don't know, because I mean, we haven't moved the rig in a month plus. Not since Halloween, so yeah, well over a month, two months, two months plus. Um, so, maybe that was it? I don't know, because we've never had that issue before that we've noticed. All right, guys, <clears throat> so as you can see, we have completed our floor, it's all done. But actually, it's only dry fit in there. Uh, we ran out of both vapor barrier and our subfloor sheets uh, the other day when we were finishing this up. So uh, we have been to the store since. We bought our three additional pieces of subfloor and we bought the extra vapor barrier. Actually, that's the vapor barrier I bought that you guys saw in the previous vlog where I was talking about the subfloor. The one big sheet of it. If you're ever gonna be doing uh, subflooring with vapor barriers and all that, don't go with the skinny three foot rolls. Go with the big rolls. Far easier, cheaper, and just like less of a headache. Obvious. It, it seems obvious. Anyways, uh, so I have to actually pull all this back up because, uh, like I said, it was a dry fit in there. We have yet to jackhammer out and remove all that cement that you saw us cutting up the other day. So we have to uh, go ahead and get out our air hammer and get all that jacked up and see how that goes. This is my first time ever uh, cutting up and removing cement, so I'm really interested to see how uh, that concrete reacts to the air hammer that I bought. I didn't get a big, huge jackhammer. Uh, I didn't rent a jackhammer because they're like 80 bucks a day, and I was able to get this right here. A little tiny air hammer that uh, multiple people on there said did a good job for small amounts of concrete removal like I'm doing here. So for $30, I believe it was, plus like 15 for some bits. I now own this versus twice as much for renting a actual jackhammer for the day, plus chiseling around the existing piping over here. I was a little nervous about using like a full size jackhammer, so uh, I'm really hoping that this works as well as I hope it does, or uh, at least quasi good. <laughs> Anyways, with all that being said, let's pull up the insulation, the two by fours, get everything moved over here so we can start chiseling out some concrete. By the way, this is my first day wearing this super warm heated uh, jacket. It uses the same, uh, where are my tools? Anyways, it uses the same 20 volt power batteries as my tools that I've been using. It's so nice and cozy. I don't know if you guys can see that, but you can see my breath out here and it feels so nice and warm. Although I'll probably be sweaty in about five minutes from moving all this stuff. Got your flag stuck firm in my heart. Life is so crazy. You got so much Let's see if it works. When I'm with you, Safety first. I, I have goggles on. Castles in June. No clouds overhead, nothing to block the view. Same castles in June. Same castles in June. Time but right now and no one but me and you Oh I couldn't take it 
I wouldn't know what to do If you ever decided It was too good to be true Loving is easy When you've got no worries But when I'm with you There's nowhere to hurry to Sing castles in June Sing castles in June No clouds overhead And nothing to block the view Sing castles in June Sing castles in June No time but right now And no one but me and you All right, there it is. We got all the way through the foundation there, all the way around. We're dug out, so we are good to go there. And then tomorrow, we're gonna take this little guy, and this goes right there. And then our one and a half inch pipe will run all the way from our sink right into there and we will be able to drain our kitchen sink. In conclusion, my review of this little air hammer for 30 bucks, definitely uh, I think it was worth the purchase because it'll be great to be able to have it for the future. Not so stoked with the little 20 ounce tank, uh, or 20 ounce, the 20 gallon tank I believe is what this is. So I would definitely recommend for using the air hammer, you can get away with a little guy like this, but uh, I would recommend one of the bigger tanks because it works really well. The hammer works pretty darn well when you're up at like 80 or 90 PSI. But uh, like I said, once you get down below 70 or so, it's like, yeah. Anyways, whew, time to head inside and get some dinner and call it a night. But tomorrow, we should have a drain. All right, so this morning I am jumping straight into it. I'm gonna get this pipe, which is a three by one and a half, cut in and installed. My goal by the end of today is to get all of this completely installed and finished, get the subfloor insulation and the vapor barrier covering the top of it so we can finish framing this front room and be done with framing and move on. Oh, finally move on to electrical and plumbing, which is our last two hurdles before we can get our rough in inspection done. That way we can get siding on the outside of our house and just not feel as rushed because I, the reason I'm feeling rushed is that vapor barrier is being battled or beaten by the elements, by the cold and by the rain and pretty soon by the snow. With that being said, let's start hacking away at this thing. I have shut off, by the way, the main water to the house, even though there is a shut off here, I have shut it off out of the box, so in case I nick this one inch line, we're not gonna have, theoretically, a ton of water shooting everywhere. So uh, I have shut off the water. It's like working with uh, power. Shut it off as far back on the main breaker as you can. <sighs> Yeah. Is there a way help? <sighs> I wish, kiddo, but not really. Whoa, how far down do you need to go? Went all the way underneath the slab. Do you have to go any farther? Nope. Why are you cutting that? So we can take this whole piece out. Uh, will you actually get me the drill? Do you know what a drill is? Yeah, where is it? It should be up front. Yeah, it's loud. And how much fun are you doing? Okay. Yeah, well, 
wall come down? The wall? No. All this stuff, hopefully. Aha! Did you get it? Got it. Now what? Why is there a glow on there? I had to chisel out about another eight inches to a foot here to make the angle of this pipe fit here. But I think I've got it pretty good now. We've got approximately a two inch drop, inch, inch and a half drop here over this six foot span, which I believe meets code. I can't remember what it is. I think it's pretty minimal, like half inch or something like that per uh, six feet. Don't quote me on that, but uh, I'm pretty sure I got more than enough here. I will double check that, but uh, we got a good slope. Everything looks good. I've already got my T valve attached here. So now I just gotta uh, attach my inch and a half pipe and uh, should be golden. So I have all of the insulation and vapor barrier all put into place and I even got this little receptacle plumbed in here so that way we can run power to our island. In addition, I wanted to show you something over here uh, where I have my drain pipe running for the sink. I am going to be adding two by fours on either side of that pipe to give it a little extra support just to be better safe than sorry. And I know some of you have been commenting on whether or not this uh, subfloor will pass uh, inspection but we are actually following what the county asked us to do this is the exact layout design that they told us to do so unless something got completely miscommunicated we should be good to go there but I am very proud of the progress we've made because we now have the entire floor sands the bathroom vapor barriered insulated and subfloored and that my friends is a drain so much work went into that. It's insane between the planning and the cutting and then the jackhammering and the sweeping and the cleaning and the vacuuming and the gluing and the gits and the buzzes and the jello pops. I don't know why I just went to a really bad Cosby impression, but uh, whew, feels good. It feels good that it's gonna work out. So you know that moment in like all home remodel shows where it's like, they rip open the wall and then they find asbestos or they rip down uh, the club floor and they find that all the floor joists underneath are destroyed and it's like, no, what will we do? Will we love it or list it? Or, Anyways, that's the moment we're at right now. 